Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 4 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we decide the playoff grid here in the Cup Series as this is the final race of the regular season here in Indianapolis for the Brickyard 400. But first up we have the Xfinity Series race where we actually had myself in the car for the first time in a little bit. This was probably going to be the last time you see myself here in the Xfinity car in the NASCAR Heat 4 Career Mode. So we're hoping that we can at least go out on on top for myself here in the Xfinity series, but unfortunately wasn't the greatest qualifying effort for myself, but I would immediately get aggressive and make a three wide up the inside on the uh, 39 there as we went down into turns one, trying to move my way forwards as quickly as possible, especially on this first and opening lap here is when our opportunity was going to be the highest to make up a bunch of ground as we come through out of turns two heading down this back straight away on this opening lap Tyler Reddick was out front at this point as I was continuing to get aggressive making getting, uh, some three wide moves there uh, and we would move ahead of the 0-7 there of Ray Black Jr. who was on my outside at this point as it went down into uh, turns three and we had Austin Sindrick and Noah Gregson just in front of myself as we came through out of turns three heading down into turns four so now up the inside of the 9, as we would pass him on the exit of the corner, we would get to the back of the 11 of Justin Haley, and then get to the inside of him as well as we would also pass him. Uh, but after we passed Haley, I had struggled to do anything for, for the rest of the race. We came through a little bit later, approaching the end of the race, and I, like I said, couldn't do anything. We come to the final lap already, and then I had finally run down another driver of the 22 of Austin Centric here as I went down the back straightaway down towards turns 3 here in Indianapolis for the final time, like I said, uh, now as we come through the center of the corner. Cendric tries to fight back on that outside. I get sideways and that allows Cendric actually to maintain that outside position on myself as we go down into turns for slipping and sliding a little bit again but we slide up in front of him and now he's going to cross us over nearly but we have the momentum to stay in front of him as we go down this front straightaway for the final time so we're going to come through to finish just in front of that 22 of Austin Cendric to finish P7 here in Indianapolis. So uh, a solid effort. Tyler Reddick with the victory here in Indianapolis now as we have I think one race left in the Xfinity Series regular season as well. But now we go to the Cup Series race here. Uh, as you do see the point standings for Xfinity uh, on your screen. Tyler Reddick now with five wins. But we come through, like I said, into the Cup Series for myself in qualifying out of turns one. Uh, a track that we usually seem to have a good chunk of speed at. Last time we came here, uh, we were fighting for the lead with Kyle Busch. I think we qualified second or third last time here. And like I said, we were fighting for the lead with Kyle Busch, but the car has started to slip and slide as the run went on. And I certainly kept that in mind coming in to this Brickyard 400 weekend, uh, remembering how loose the car got last time on the longer run. So I decided we would change things up a bit and make sure the car would be a little bit tighter, hopefully here on the longer run. Probably still gonna free up a little bit, but hopefully it won't be uh, nearly as significant as last season here in Indianapolis because I think if we can keep the car under control we can have a legitimate chance to win the Brickyard 400 and it starts though with a good qualifying lap and we actually come through to get a very solid qualifying lap of 51.190 and we qualify P4 here for the Brickyard 400 so very solid indeed we might have a good chance here today to get our first Brickyard 400 victory Bowman on the pole. NASCAR makes its way to Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Big Machine Vodka Brickyard 400. It's always great coming back here, and this is the final stop of the regular season. So for those drivers on the outside looking in, kissing the brakes would sure feel good today. All right, thank you, Rick Allen. We're ready to go green here for the Brickyard 400 at Indianapolis. Alex Bowman is really fast today, and he starts P1, so we know that he is going to be a big threat. Tyler Reddick starting at the back of the field with an unapproved body modification during qualifying. Now is the two drivers to keep in mind. Jimmy Johnson, Daniel Suarez, both just below the cut line, 17 points and 18 points Number out for both of them, so they are the ones to watch today. Now is the green flag is out, and we are underway, so really Daniel Suarez, Jimmy Johnson need to be doing everything they can to get stage points here in stage one and stage two and William Byron's kind of that driver that's really in a tough position he's the last driver in but he only has about a 17 point buffer over Daniel Suarez and then I think like I said it was 18 points over Jimmy Johnson so it's going to get very close between them now as we come through out of turns two we lost a little bit of ground there being on the outside lane of course now as we drop down about a position or two down this back straight away now as we are right on the back of our teammate Kurt Busch I had to check up a little bit there so I just uh, didn't slam into the back one but we do 
give him a bump, and then we get clear of Eric Jones now as we go down into turn three, just behind our Chip Ganassi Racing teammate as it's already actually a single file in front of us here in the top five as we go down into turns four. Jones nearly had an opportunity to actually sneak up my inside, but now we sneak up the inside of our teammate of Kurt Busch getting aggressive because we know from last season how fast we have uh, or how fast of a car we have here in Indianapolis now as we would clear our teammate of Kurt Busch down the front stretch down into turns one here as we start the second lap of this race. Bowman, though, was in command at this point as we come through at a turn four. We got to the back of Martin Truex Jr. here on the end of lap two. Gave him a nice shove. I actually would get past Martin Truex Jr. I forgot to show that for some reason, but I would get past him uh, without any issues. And then we would run down his teammate, Kyle Busch. So Truex, he was down in P4. He had actually drifted quite a ways back now uh, as Alex Bowman, he drove away. We get to the inside of Kyle Busch, though. Down the back straightaway, a little bit of contact, actually, on his left rear. So we're going to be side by side with the Joe Gibbs Racing Champion, the two two-time champion as we go down into turn three and we would clear Kyle Busch with no problem at all and then set our sights on the 88 of Alex Bowman. It was about this time last season I think uh, about five or six laps in when the car started to slip and slide but this time it, it was a little bit uh, slippy slidey but it really wasn't a big deal so I was very confident. We come through to lap eight of 11 and the car was still driving pretty good so I knew that we had some serious potential here today in Indianapolis. Now as we were 1.6 seconds behind Bowman at this point we closed it down to 1.3 on the next lap so I know we have some speed here, some serious speed here as we come through to the final lap already though of the first stage and I just couldn't quite get to the 88 of Alex Bowman but we completely drove away from third place on back as we go down into turns three for the final time here in the first stage of the Brickyard 400. Alex Bowman, though, leads away as we go down into turns four. Obviously, not nearly enough time to run down the 88 of Alex Bowman as we go down this front straightaway here for the final time in stage one. We closed in quite a bit there, but Alex Bowman wins stage one. We're going to come through to cross the line just behind him here in the second position. So, uh, still a very, very solid effort here in stage one, and I think this will set us up very well. We know how strong our pit crew has been this season. I think we might be able to possibly get the lead from Alex Bowman here on the pit lane if our pit crew can live up to the hype we've had all season there there but you see uh, daniel suarez nor jimmy johnson get stage points so that's really going to hurt them going into stage two they just missed a big opportunity and then the pit crew gets us out in p1 here for the start of the second stage we know how strong they've been and they live up to it again today now as the green flag is out and we are once again underway alex bowman drops down from p1 to p3 there on the pit stop so uh fortunately for him though he will be on the inside lane as we go down into turns one. It would be really nice if he was actually second because then we can maybe shuffle him back because we know that the 88 100% probably has the fastest car here today but I think if we can stay in his draft if he gets out in front of me then we'll have a legitimate fighting chance and sure enough I give him the bottom lane down the back straightaway and he just powers right on by myself here as we go down this back stretch. Hamlin and Kyle Busch side by side behind us as we go down towards a turn three. I would slip in just behind the 88 of Bowman and just in front of the 11 of a Denny Hamlin, who had driven up into P3. He has seven wins in this regular season. He looks to make it eight today here in Indianapolis as we come through now out of turns four, trying to stick with that 88 of Bowman, just trying to stay in his draft, but it got pretty tight there on the exit of turns four. Nearly hit the wall, but I got out of the throttle enough to make sure that did not happen. But Hamlin, just behind myself, Harvick was side by side with Kyle Busch at this point as we started the second lap here of the second stage. But we would be able to keep Alex Bowman, though, within range here uh, as we would just kind of be able to maintain that draft. And it was really all about the draft. The draft is so big. We come through now on at lap three out of turn four. You can see kind of how tight the car was getting there. Uh, but we had once again driven away from third place on back. So I decided here now on lap five that we actually had a run on Bowman. I was going to make a move. And then the caution came out as soon as I went to make a move for the lead. So this would obviously uh, force us into a restart here with no pit stops necessary. So Daniel Suarez, though, and Jimmy Johnson still not in a stage points position. So they are really in an unfortunate spot here heading in towards uh, the end of the second stage. Now we'll restart P2 here side by side with the 88 of Alex Bowman. Now the green flag is back out. Now only three laps remain here in the second stage. Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin make up row two. Kyle Busch and Chase Allen. Elliott, row three there in P5 and P6 as we come through the center of turns one. 
trying to get close to the 88 there on his right door, but I don't want to get too close and make contact and possibly cause an incident. Now he's going down into turn two. Once again, there was a gap between Bowman and third place of Kevin Harvick, so I was able to slide down to the bottom and get right in behind the 88 of the Hendrick Motorsports driver. And I was thinking here, do I want to make a move or do I want to wait here? But I decided we go down towards turn three. I'm going to stay in behind Bowman here because I, I knew if I made a move right there, we probably would have brought Harvick into the battle. Uh, so I decided they're on the front straightaway now hitting just two to go in the stage. We're going to make a move for the lead and try to seal the deal here for the stage victory as we go down into turns one. But I just didn't quite have that speed I needed on the entrance of the corner. And Bowman fights back. He clears me on the exit of turns one and we would bring Harvick right into the mix. So I stayed tucked in behind Bowman for the rest of that lap and we will drive away again from Harvick as we're now on the final lap of stage two as we went down into turns two knowing that I could get a very big run through turns two and sure enough we do now we just have to build the run up down the back stretch but once again the caution comes out and end stage two about three quarters of a lap early. Daniel Suarez picks up one point in the stage which means he's probably 16 points out now if I'm not mistaken. Jimmy Johnson, though, he's in big trouble. William Byron uh, really just has to finish where he does, and he'll be fine. But we want to, once again, take the lead on the pit stops going into Stage 3. So now the final stage is officially underway here in Indianapolis. And if William Byron can just finish top 15 or 16, he will hold on to that final position in the playoffs now as we come through turns one Alex Bowman to my uh, fortunateness uh, whatever you call it he, uh, he was starting on the outside lane and that would shuffle him down all the way to P3 maybe even P4 as we come through out of turns two so now, obviously, the hope is that he gets shuffled back here as we go down this back stretch, but he has so much speed. You can see he's powering ahead of the 18 of Kyle Wilson. As I kind of throw a block there on the 4 of Harvick, and Bowman already gets side-by-side -side with the 4 of Kevin Harvick as we go down into turns 3, but he might lose that ground now as we come through the center of the corner, but he's actually going to maybe get cleared by Harvick. It's really hard to tell by that rear view mirror if he's clear or not, but yes, Harvick was clear there for P2 as we exit turns 4. I made a bit of a mistake there and nearly get the ball and then nearly allow Harvick to get to my end side but I slow him up and then in the process of that happening Bowman has a massive run gets to my outside here as we complete the first lap of the third and final stages we're going to be side by side for the lead through turns one here with the 88 of Alex Bowman who has just been the dominant car here today we nearly make contact there on the exit of turns one as we dive it down into turns two trying to maintain the front position but Bowman has a drive off the corner and we settle in here behind him in that second spot with Kevin Harvick just behind myself on my left rear actually ready to pounce on an opportunity but we have the draft from the 88 and, and uh, we actually thankfully get clear of Kevin Harvick as we're going down into turn three with a little bit over 10 laps to go here in this race now as we exit turn three right on the back of Bowman and sure enough we would start to stretch out that gap again to third place but then on the exit of turns four and lap 29 I hit the wall for the first time surprisingly because we've been tight a few times and gotten really close to that wall and this time we actually hit it and that would allow Bowman to get out of drafting range and that would put Harvick right on my back bumper I thought you know what we'll just drive away from Harvick and close right up on Bowman sure enough though that would not happen we come to lap 31. Harvick was putting all the pressure on me. Bowman had driven away here with 10 laps to go. I just felt like I had nothing, but then the caution comes out with 10 laps to go now. Everybody coming to the pit lane at this point. And this time I would come in to put just enough fuel on the car, and I decided uh, we would put two tires on the car, and that's kind of been a uh, call we've done lately, and this time we lose position. So instead of the AI taking uh, four tires, they actually took no tires while we took two, and that might have completely done us in for the race. Alex Bowman might be able to drive away with it now as there's only seven laps to go. I haven't given up hope quite yet. We know we have fresher tires, and we're only down in P11. Usually when we go in and take more tires than the AI, we're down in like 25th, so we still might have a fighting chance now as we come through at turns so I really hope we didn't throw this race away because we had some serious potential for Alex Bowman. Now is the 31 of Tyler Reddick actually, I believe, got in the wall uh, right beside me on the exit of turn two. But we power ahead of Jones and make it three wide with Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin down the back straightaway. We're going to get past them both. And we're now up inside the top ten here as we go down into turn three. Bowman, though, sees the opportunity. He has a clean year. He knows he can drive away and not have to worry about me as we're trying to get through traffic here with Boyer. Logano side by side as we come through out of turn four. William Byron easily going to make it into the playoffs if he does doesn't make a mistake at this point as I got into the side of Logano and then we forced a three wide between him and Clint Boyer. We now find ourselves in P5. Go to the inside of Chase Elliott with a big run here from the draft. Nearly 200 miles per hour as we go down into turns 
one end. Now we're going to carry the momentum through turns one and get power ahead of the uh, Alex Bowman's teammate of Chase Elliott as we go down into the second turn. Right behind Kevin Harvick now, knowing I need to get past these guys as quickly as possible. Sure enough, down the back stretch, we look to the left-hand side of Harvick and use that draft from the 18 as help to make sure we power ahead of the Stuart Haas driver champion, my former teammate. And now we're also going to power ahead of Kyle Busch and thankfully we clear him into turn three and somehow we've climbed up into second place here in just a couple laps. We come through to lap 36, only five laps to go here in the Brickyard 400 and I saw Bowman starting to get reeled in just a little bit. We were starting to just close that gap ever so slightly to the back of the 88. We have the tire advantage, and it was certainly paying off. We come through to lap 36, or the end of lap 36, approaching just four laps to go, and we had closed up nearly within drafting range of the 88. Then, sure enough, on lap 37, towards the end of lap 37, approaching three to go, we had gotten to within about a car length of the 88 of Alex Bowman. So right up on his back bumper at this point now, as I know we should make a move, but I decided to push him out just a little bit here as we went down towards turns one. I wanted time to move right, and I was hoping that we could just really make one move and just clear the 88 of Alex Bowman and hopefully drive away with the tire advantage that we do have but we know how fast that 88 is we come through approaching just two laps to go now here in Indianapolis and I decide it's time to make a move for the lead as we go down towards turns one side by side with the Hendrick Motorsports driver and now he's not going to give up we know how strong he is in any lane especially on that outside sure enough Bowman fights back and he might clear us down into turns two but no we hang on at his door and we're actually going to be even through the center of turns two now on the exit there we're going to be a little bit loose there we're going to side draft the 88 as hard as we can down this back stretch right on that left rear quarter panel of Bowman and we keep him at bay for the moment he nearly powers ahead again but we side draft him once again as we go down into turn three only a lap and a half to go at this point now as we nearly get ahead of him but can't quite do so as we exit turns three myself and Bowman both desperately want win number three on the season we slip up there through turns four and Bowman is clear on the exit of turns four as we approach the final lap here in the Brickyard 400 knowing we still have a one final chance possibly here now as we need to get back up the inside of Bowman and sure enough I take the opportunity as soon as I get it here's the white flag is in the air it's going to come down to the wire here there's no one behind us to even battle uh, it out with us so it's just down between myself and the 88 of Alex Bowman side by side through turns two now as we're about maybe a quarter of a car length ahead, but he battles back here on the back straightaway. We know we're going to have to side drift a little bit of contact between myself and Alex Bowman there as I'm going to get right on that left door without hitting him this time, right on that left rear, making sure he does not get clear. As we go down into turn three, a lot of side drafting going on at this point now as we are almost clear of Bowman, but just can't quite make it happen as we're going to be side by side down into turns four for the final time here in the Brickyard 400. Bowman on the outside, myself on the inside. We're a little bit sideways on the exit of the corner. We make contact coming down the front front away side by side with the 88 of Bowman. He has the speed here as we're coming to the line. More contact at the line. It's going to be myself winning here on the Brickyard 400 in a photo finish. Unbelievable scenes here in Indianapolis. We got Bowman by just a few centimeters there as I was beating and banging with him. Put him in the wall a few times and we make it happen. I know uh, that's not the fashion that some of you probably want to see me win in, uh, but it was for the Brickyard 400. It was the final race of the regular season. I really wanted uh, to get a Brickyard 400 on the list of victories here before our career mode is over, and this was our last chance to get it. Um, and playoff points are so important, and I knew I had to do what I could there to get that extra five playoff points. And there you see it was, what, five one-thousandths of a second or something like that, uh, the margin of victory by Jimmy Johnson. Daniel Suarez did not do enough to make it into the playoffs. So you're going to see, though, the playoff grid on your screen. Martin Truex Jr. did DNF, but what a finish that was. Uh, I'm so happy that we pulled that off there. As we've had a few photo finishes this season, we've been a part of one recently at New Hampshire. Uh, that one ended in myself finishing second. Bowman, uh, not the happiest with me after that. Understandably, uh, I put him in the wall and slammed into the side of him a few times to win that race. I mean, there's no doubting that. Uh, certainly not the cleanest way I've won a race, uh, but uh, it's just a way it is sometimes here uh, in the Cup Series. But now you're going to see, like I said, the playoff grid. So, uh, one race left, I think, in the Xfinity Series regular season, um, which will decide the playoffs there in the next episode. But, as always, if you guys did enjoy this episode, you know what to do. But there you see the playoff grid. Byron, Boyer, Blaney, and Busher are the four drivers out right now from 13th through 16th. And we come in 24 points to the good. So, not great, but not terrible. So, I'm confident that we can make it through this first round 
without a problem. Hopefully we can get a win, which would be really nice early on. Las Vegas has always been a good track for us. So we'll see how we do in the next one. Thank you for watching, everybody, and have yourselves a great day.